take a quick second. I've had a lot of questions about these black velvet watercolor brushes lately. Um, I wanted to demonstrate them against um, a high-end watercolor brush so you can kind of get a feel for what they are. Um, the silver black velvet brushes are natural squirrel hair, real squirrel combined with synthetic fibers that look a little like velvet. I think that's what they got their name from. Um, I bought this original set, which was these three, I believe, for about $35, which was a really good price. Um, and I've used the Dickens mostly out of these two. And then recently I bought this dagger or what they call a striper. Um, I haven't actually used it yet, so we'll play with it a little bit today. So I um, have some diopside green here from Daniel Smith's Primatech line. It was a nice bright green. I thought it might be um, nice to work with here. My brush is pre-wetted. Um, and so this has got uh, some sediment in it, so I'm gonna stir it up a bit. Um, this is a number eight brush and kind of get a feeling for how much flow it has to it. It's pretty nice. Okay. And then um, I can take a number eight brush from, uh, let's see, number eight brush. So what always happens is my brushes run off and then I had some audio problems in this next segment. So I'm going to come back and narrate exactly what I was doing. So we put down the silver velvet swatch. Um, it did a very nice job. It laid down a nice um, gradation of color. And now I've got a Da Vinci round Cosmotop F um, brush. They both are about $20 actually. Um, so they're very comparable brushes. Um, I'm going to come in, I'm going to load it exactly the same way as I did the silver brush. And you will notice that when I do the swatch, the color doesn't dump down first. Um, and so you don't get that pool of green like um, the other brush did. That has to do with how well the pigments flow out of the brush. Um, if you're wanting that effect, the black velvet brush is great. Um, with them being equal amount of dollars, I would choose the Da Vinci here, but the, I use the black velvet brushes a lot and I actually really love them. Um, especially some of their other brushes that aren't the round ones, as you'll see here next. Let's take a look at this black, um, velvet, silver, three quarters. Um, they call it an oval uh, let me get it wet and um, typically I would use something like this to put down a fair amount of water um, so I think what I'll do is put down a water chunk here this is really nice this covered about this much area very consistently then I'm gonna take the black silver and then put this in here so you can see, I get a nice wet on wet technique area. It's put down quite a bit of water. So you could do a pretty good wash with this. So you can come back. So thirsty brush technique, make this, dry this off really well. Then this brush, because it's natural hair, will soak up quite a bit. See how it's bent like this? This is a hallmark of a natural brush. Um, a, a truly synthetic brush will not actually do this. Um, so this is, remember the black velvet are tr true squirrel hair, squirrel hair plus black um, velvet synthetic fibers, I call them. So. so anyways, so down here you see this, watch this. So, it picked up a large amount of what's there. And so that's how you get a soft edge. You take a wet brush that's been dried and then you come in here like this and you pick it up. That's really nice actually. I own a $100 brush that I use for that technique. I would use this in an instant for the same exact technique. Um, so that's a winner in my book. Absolutely, I think that's about a $20 brush. 
compared to my $100 brush, which is right here, which is granted huge, but it's all natural, no synthetic in it, uh, Da Vinci. This works for this technique just fine. So I wouldn't think twice about using this with lots of different multimedia and not worrying about the brush itself. Squirrel holds an enormous amount of water. So nice bleed. Um, it's hard to tell because I've got a bit of shine on it still at the moment. I'm currently on uh, Fabriano Studio watercolor paper that's about 25% um, rag, so I'm not on a piece of arches at the moment. So to give you an idea, here's the detail brush. I don't usually get detail brushes wet. We'll go ahead and get our own here. So very nice. This is a script. Um, this is a number one script. I would totally do lettering with this. Okay. And then the last one is a striper. I'm going to get it wet. Wet brushes pick up paint out of the well better. So you'd think, okay, well, it's going to get wet anyway, so I'm just going to just dive in there. Um, it actually has a hard time picking it up because um, the science of it, which at some point I'll explain. So if you have a wet brush and you go into wet paint, you'll get more of it in the brush. So the design of this is to hold a lot of paint and put it down pretty evenly. So... And it goes and it goes and I'm going to go completely off the page and come back at it again. Tremendous amount of capacity in this brush. Goodness gracious. Very cool for brush strokes. So these are a winner. They, they have been for a long time for me. I recommend these to beginning artists who want a really nice brush. Um, doesn't want to spend the money that's in a Da Vinci. Doesn't need to spend the money that's in a Da Vinci. Um, but wants a nice watercolor brush for multi-purposes. I feel like you could do a full watercolor painting. Um, you could definitely get in the notebook and paint your little heart out in a Hobonichi or a Midori. Um, just your everyday play. These are great everyday brushes that you don't have to worry as much about. And they're, you know, they're not a $2 brush, um, but they're also not a $30 brush, which is significant um, when you're starting out because you um, are bound to make some mistakes with brushes. So anyways, there is my hopefully short explanation on black velvet watercolor brushes.